Hello there and welcome to your daily painting show, The Daily You Party. So I figure that it's, it's now time to evolve my content a little bit. So yes, I have been producing, um, you know, instructional painting videos every single day, but I really want to have my videos, I want my videos to have a positive impact on everyone's lives, on everyone's life that watches my daily show. So what I want is to inspire. I want to inspire positivity, education, and relaxation. Relaxation, education, positivity. These are the three main factors in what I want to provide to you, the viewer. So go ahead, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know how your day is going. I want to know what you're working on in your own personal artwork. Are you a beginner, experienced, intermediate, advanced? What's going on with your own artwork? What's going on with your own life? Because I'm going to be sharing more of my life with you. I think that it's important to go beyond the canvas, so to speak, and to really put yourself into uh, this mindset to inspire positivity. It's important to carry the torch of positivity. Whenever the world around you seems down, gloomy, or whatever, you should be the spark that ignites the flame of which is positivity. So on the palette here, I'm actually gonna recharge it. So it just came out of the freezer, so I let I let it uh, cool or warm up for maybe about, I don't know, 15 minutes. So I took it out of the freezer, and again, if you want to save your paints, one way to do that is to put your palette in the freezer. Um, so most of these colors, especially the reds, are still wet. Maybe the burnt umber has dried a little bit, but you know, it's okay. So the ivory black, I'm definitely running out of the ivory black, so I'm gonna go ahead and recharge the ivory black. And I think that, yeah, I'm gonna need burnt umber, alizarin, crimson, and I think just that, and then we'll be able to get into painting. All right, so here is the burnt umber, and oh yeah. I need titanium white. So yeah, I need the white. So titanium white and flake white coming up. All right, so we got the titanium white, the flake white. And next thing I'm gonna need is my medium. So my medium that I like to use is Neo McGilp. It's a fast dryer. And remember, no one's paying me uh, yet to say these things to you. So I'm gonna tell you I'm using Neo McGilp. And is the camera gonna focus, focus, focus? Come on camera, focus. Whatever. The camera doesn't want to focus here. Let me switch. All right, so here is the medium that I like to use. This is Neo McGilp. It's a fast drying medium. It's a gel-like medium and I just put it right on the palette and I just use it to increase the fluidity of the paint. And paper towels, I love using Viva brand paper towels. V-I-V-A, the one that's uh, that says like cloth. Yeah, that's the one I like to use. Let's break off a little piece. Let's fold it over and that's it. And since this is a daily show, I really want to evolve my content. I want to be able to provide you with the reality of being here in the studio and going out painting a la prima uh, plein airs or, or teaching a class or running a portrait group or whatever. You're going to have all of that. And it's my mission, it's my, this really is my mission to inspire positivity into the world through painting. Now you probably noticed it, I don't know, but the audio is a little different. I don't have a uh, microphone clipped onto me so I can't really, like when I turn, <laughs> you can't hear me that well. Um, so I'm testing it out, if you don't like this microphone, I'm gonna switch back to the one that clips onto me, but it will make my life a little more difficult. So uh, if you if you want the best quality audio out of this setup, you probably want to listen to me on a speaker. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't use the headphones because my uh, heating unit is on. And again, I'm trying to give you the reality of being here in the studio. I'm trying to present my true self to you. So right now it's 2 p.m. It is Monday, 2 p.m. You're probably watching this on Tuesday. I'm teaching a portrait class at 6 p.m. so I have a little tiny window to paint. And so, you know, oftentimes, just like in the studio, <laughs> we don't know what we want to paint. I, to be honest, I wasn't really that inspired to come back to this painting and I'll, I'll show you why. So again, if I'm gonna be all about truth here, remember 
the truth hurts sometimes. I'm not really that happy with the way that this face turned out. And I made a little experiment. So I, I made a little bit of an experiment, okay? So um, what you're gonna see here is a close-up of the face painted from the photo reference. So the one we've been painting. And it's not bad, right? I mean, you can definitely see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna oil it out all right, so now you can see it with much more clarity because I added the Neo McGill Medium. Take a good look at this portrait. And now I'm gonna show you a portrait that I painted. Uh, I started painting from life because I do attend a portrait painting group and that's how I got the image for this model. Trust me, you're not gonna need the photo reference for what you're about to see. The contrast between uh, these paintings is insane. So let's do that. And the contrast between these paintings is insane. Um, this one, was started from life and this is all painted in one day so this one was started from life with the portrait painting group and you know I didn't even oil it out but this is just to show you the contrast between how I paint when I'm uh, you know trying to teach and demonstrate uh, so this one was not on camera this is just me painting regularly so this video is about when things go wrong so this is how it looks like when I'm painting from life photo reference life with only a tiny bit of working from the photo reference. Uh, so let me show you here. Uh, here are some pictures of me working in the, well not me, but of pictures of the painting in the studio as I was working with the other artists. And don't worry, I'm gonna take you on little uh, adventures to these portrait painting groups. Just know that I won't be able to film and talk at the same time in the, uh, the Lighting probably won't be optimal in those kinds of situations, but I'm trying to really bring the entire experience to you. So again, this video is all about when things go wrong. And so what went wrong with this one? Well, you might think, well, it's okay. I mean, it, it looks great. It's a little bit uh, different. And I wanna just explain what happens when things go wrong. And wrong is a relative term, especially in painting. Uh, but what happened here is that I feel like I was very, very focused on those uh, illustration drawings that I was making, those uh, structural drawings. Remember the drawings that I was making before, trying to demonstrate like the planes and stuff for the nose, the eyes and the cheekbones and all that stuff. I think that may have distracted me and I'm telling you the truth because let's face it, all of our paintings, you know, it's very difficult to outdo ourselves with painting and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, each day I'm trying to wake up and make a better painting than I did the previous day. So let's do this one more time. And the difference is like night and day. I mean, literally the difference is like night and day. So again, things don't always work out the way they, they that you plan. Certainly I have made better paintings or better faces than the one that I showed you before on this YouTube channel while painting and talking at the same time, but I just wanna show you when things go wrong. So what went well with this one was the drawing. So clearly, when working from life, the perspective, this is definitely perspective that was observed from life. If you look at the angle here, so see this angle? I'm using the shadow. So look at the angle here. So I'm using the shadow. See that? And look at the perspective. See how these lines you can imagine would converge? Let's see if I can, ooh, that's neat. Um, but yeah, there's a vanishing point. Somewhere out there where these two areas would meet and it's not as exaggerated or it's not as like limited or whatever it's just it's better okay the perspective is better the drawing is much stronger with this one and this one took less time which is insane it's insane and i'm not trying to be self-demeaning or anything like that i am a real person i'm a regular person and i have emotions i have feelings and all this yada yada but what i'm trying to get at is Sometimes things don't work out the way we want them to work out, um, but then they do in certain situations. So I think that the fact that I was working from life and without really worrying about, you know, moving my camera around or whatever, this is the way that I paint when I'm fully focused. And don't get me wrong, it's not that I'm not going to be filming certain paintings that look more realistic like this one. It's just that I wanna explain why certain things work and certain things don't work. I'm sure you've had this happen to you before, whether you're a painter or whatever. It's just certain environments, certain time frames were optimal. And I, what I want is to inspire positivity and not bring ourselves down because again, 
things happen in life, you know, stuff happens in life where, you know, I, I thought that I was happy with that painting. And then I looked at it later, and remember I did say I would experiment by painting it from life again, and you may say, well, you already painted it before, maybe that's why it came out better this time. Certainly that could be the case. But I really want to show you what it really is like to, you know, be in the studio every single day. And I think that we need to carry the torch of positivity. And that's going to be my main message for the rest of these videos. Not only to educate, but I want to inspire. Okay, so I want to inspire relaxation, education, positivity. That's the direction I'm heading with these videos. You're going to see everything. You're definitely going to see me go to my class, probably set up everything um, in this same video that you're watching now. Uh, how I set up my portrait group and all that stuff. Um, so the class that I'm going to be teaching again, it starts at 7, did I say 6? Yeah. <laughs> it starts at 7 p.m. So it's a two-hour class, 7 to 9. So now that being said, what I'm, gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to make the decision whether I want to continue working on this one, which I'm sure some of you want me to do, or I'm going to start something else. Give me a second to think here. All right, so what, what I think I'm going to do is use this as my guide now. Forget the photo reference. Uh, the photo reference is only there for reference. And I know some of you are probably screaming at me, uh, but the reality is the photo reference is merely a reference. I'm happy with the way this one came out, even though it was off camera. It was an experiment in technique and in, you know, painting. And I think that I'm gonna use this as my guide now. And so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to turn off the TV that I use for photo references. So I have my little controller over here off with the TV. So I'm not going to use the photo reference. Yes, this may aggravate some of you. So let me just show you the photo reference now of the model. Again, I didn't use the photo reference to start the painting that I was showing you before. Maybe let's do this a side by side. So here's a side by side. So you're seeing the uh, photo reference next to the painting, the one that was successful, at least in my opinion, at least more successful than the other one. And so I'm going to use that one as my reference now. So I'm going to keep an image of that one to the top left corner of your screen. And I'm going to go ahead and move this. I'm going to move it in front of the TV where I usually uh, have my photo reference. Hopefully that'll stay put there. And that's going to be my, my setup for now. So before getting uh, right into painting, again, this is really, this is really going to be about me sharing this experience with you. This is a painted life now, okay? So this is going to be positivity, education relaxation. We're going to relax by taking our time with the painting, maybe not necessarily showing every single brush stroke because that will drag on forever. Um, once in a while I will do that, don't get me wrong. Um, but really it's about the experience and it's about a painted life of positivity. So let's see if Pepper agrees with my decision, if I should or should not uh, work in this way. All right, Pepper, what do you think? So this is Pepper, my juvenile bearded dragon. She is my absolute best friend. And again, I'm really trying to share everything with you. So you're going to be seeing much more of my pets. I did talk about my love for animals. So again, Pepper, what do you think? Do you think I should paint in this way? Do you think I should do this or not? What do you think, Pepper? I think she's thinking that I should, right? All right, let's get to painting. So we're gonna work on trying to uh, recover from what happened with this painting by using the other one, just like I mentioned before. But again, you're gonna be seeing much more of my pets, much more of my friends and family. And you are my friends and family. You sitting there, right there, yes, you, you. You're gonna be on this journey with me. And again, I wanna add positivity and I want to optimize every single day of our lives because I think that that's what I'm after. I'm after inspiring positivity, education, and relaxation into our lives. Let's get to painting. All right, so this is really going to put my theory to the test because these paints have been on here for about a week now. So let's see which one of them, which ones are 
dry, which ones are wet or whatever. So those of you that have been watching these videos for a long time know what's about to take place. So I'm going to mix my color value web, starting off with burnt umber, alizarin permanent. And the way that I make this color value web is from here, we got darker. So we have our darker values here. I just really love mixing paint, to be honest. Using bristle brushes, having a ton of paint, and having my Neo McGilt medium is just, it's, it's fun. It's a big fun factor in just the paint handling aspect. Okay, so Perlene Red. And if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, and especially if you want to know all these colors that are on the palette, you can go ahead and scroll down to the description box down below. And while you're there, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have not already, it really does help me out quite a lot. So we're going to get into the Flake White. Now, you know what I like to do in the middle tones? I like to have a, um, a cross between the reds and the greens. So, you know, sap green and alizarin permanent are two colors that were made for each other. It's a match made in palette heaven, okay? So now we're gonna use a little bit of cobalt teal just because I felt like it. Sometimes you just feel out certain color mixtures, but I think I just kinda wanted to cool that color down a little bit flake white. So remember, those of you that have been watching know what I'm about to say because I kind of, I'm kind of like a parrot. Uh, I repeat certain things quite a lot, but uh, flake white has this property of which can you finish my sentence? And if you can, please comment down below. So flake white has this property of which allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much, thus allowing you to have a heavier body to the paint. I probably just butchered my own <laughs> Uh, the own thing, my own saying, whatever, you get the point. So now a little bit more of our cadmium yellow deep. Uh, what is that? That's cadmium yellow deep. That's um, cadmium orange. I did have to buy some more cadmium orange. So now uh, what I'm doing is I want a little bit more of a rosy pink color in the middle. So I'm going back to my cadmium red medium and oh yeah, look at that. The paints are not that dry. I'm actually able to use them, so this is great. This is a great way to save on your paints because again, these paints have been on my palette for now uh, a week or just about a week. So, you know, some of them over here, those are definitely dry, but it's okay. A little more titanium white and we're almost there with our color value web. And yes, I said color value web. That's just what I like to call it. So among my pets, I also keep tarantulas. So those of you that are arachnophobic, uh, don't worry, you won't be seeing a lot of tarantulas. But again, you're gonna know much more about me in these videos because I really want to share that positivity with you. And I used to be terrified of tarantulas. I used to be terrified of spiders. And when I was a kid, I admit, I would squish as many of them as I could. It would make me jump. Uh, maybe some of you can relate to that. Um, but then, you know, I think that we grow as people when we overcome our fears, and especially irrational fears, because spiders aren't out there to kill you. They're not out there to harm you. And in fact, there are no documented cases of tarantulas killing any human beings. So really, it was an irrational fear that I was so happy to get rid of. And now I love spiders. So this is why I'm kind of calling this a color value web. Okay, so the yellows are definitely living here. Um, so there lives a lot of yellow here in the lighter region of the palette. More of the rosy pinks in the middle tone region. Much more titanium white goes into the lighter areas of the palette. So the color value web is going to go all the way down towards here. And then it's a little bit more earthy, neutral in these darker half tones. And then it gets a little bit alizarin-ish in the darks. And again, I get this by blurring my eyes at the uh, the model, in this case, my uh, painting. I think that's pretty good for the color value web. So this is gonna be my charging palette. I'm gonna put this uh, palette, my charging brush, and I'm gonna put this brush off to the side. All right, so I'm gonna put this off to the side, right next to my container here of odorless mineral spirits. And I'm gonna use some uh, synthetic brushes, just because I don't really need a lot. So again, these are just some, uh, what are they? These are size one round brushes and we have a, t a size two round brushes of the Master's Touch brand. And the green one that you can't really read too well uh, is a, um, I think it's a, 
a Princeton synthetic brush, if I remember properly. And remember, no one's paying me to tell you any of this stuff yet. And even when they do, you're still going to have my honest opinion on the material. So I'm going to use synthetics for now. And if you're wondering why synthetics and why such used up synthetics, yes, I need to buy newer brushes. These are fairly beat up. But um, I like to use synthetic brushes when I don't want to add that much paint. Bristle brushes are very useful for um, adding bucket loads of paint. Uh, tons and tons of paint. Uh, synthetics are kind of to herd the paint, so to add more specificity uh, to the shapes. And I'm just adding a little bit more of a cooler tone into the middle tone region of the palette because I'm going to be examining uh, the eye sockets. So I'm going to start off with the eye sockets um, in this painting. And then, yes, we're finally, finally going to get to apply paint to canvas. So let's start off with the eye socket. So the camera is front and center, but notice there's a quite a lot of glare. I think that's going to make it difficult for you to watch. So I'm going to move the uh, camera a little bit. Sorry for the motion. So I'm moving the camera a little bit, which does distort the image, but see that there's less glare. So I'd rather you actually be able to see the paint that I apply, even if it distorts the image a little bit but you can see now how there's much more clarity. And I'm gonna do one, one final adjustment here and I'm gonna just uh, change, there you go, the light sensitivity just so you can see the brush strokes with much more clarity. And we're going to turn off auto focus so it doesn't focus on my hand. All right, not focusing on my hand, great. All right, so you're gonna have the photo reference there. Photo reference is going to be, oh, that was weird. Photo reference there. Photo reference is going to be to the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it so you can refer to it as the painting develops so okay these eyes that's the first major thing they're too close um, but one thing that I'm starting to realize more and more um, is that it doesn't really matter if you get the features in the right place because if you don't understand the structure involved in the uh, features you just, you're gonna be running in circles and it's not gonna be that, I'm uh, sorry, I just bumped into the camera. It's not gonna be that beneficial to you if you're just mainly running in circles and just copying little shapes. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reevaluate the entire structure of the eye socket because I think that the structure itself, it needs to widen to get more of the likeness of the model. So what we're gonna do is with this one brush, we're going to work on the uh, the values and in particular the structure involved in these uh, shapes. So remember each plane change is indicated by a value change vice versa. Each value change indicates the plane change. And I'm going to try to focus much more in the uh, painting process. Well I'm going to try to focus much more in on painting so I can provide a better result for you. So. Uh, that being said, I don't think I'm going to film every single brush stroke involved in this because I will probably lose my train of thought trying to keep, you know, the English right or whatever. Um, so I'm going to explain as much as I can. But once I get into uh, a very, very fine focus, I'm definitely going to have to skip to certain areas of the uh, painting footage. And then later we're going to go to my portrait painting class. A fun day. Every day is going to be a fun day. Every day we can be in the studio. It's a day we can learn and have fun. So again, it must look really strange. So let's just take this eye out too. Just so we don't have one and then, you know, not another. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to observe all of these shapes. Now you're seeing the photo reference, which is a photo reference of the painting, oddly enough of the other painting that I did. And um, so right here, I'm actually gonna be pushing the shape out a little bit. And again, this is something very new to me, but let me know in the comments down below, have you ever done something like this? Where you, uh, you know, you paint, uh, you paint something from a photograph and then you paint something from life and then you notice the differences, it's wild. So again, um, this point here is gonna have to come out so I'm just using my cadmium yellow, uh, cadmium yellow medium, the lighter yellow, because there was much more light or much more color from life. 
the photograph did distort the color quite a lot. So um, it's important to study color from life. And I'm going to take you to the uh, portrait painting groups and I know it's going to look weird uh, with me talking there when other people are uh, I'm going to try to keep it as professional as possible when I'm with my portrait painting buddies and I'm going to ask them if it's okay for me to talk during certain instances, maybe when there's a model break and um, you know stuff like that. I really want to bring you along this journey. Okay, the next thing I'm noticing is this angle. Notice the angle there between the eyes. Maybe it wasn't wrong in the photograph. Maybe I just like messed up, um, you know, when I was painting before it could be but anyway there's much more of an angle I'm going to use the shadow so there's much more of an angle like that all right so now I'm actually going to switch to a different brush and I'm going to go into the middle tone middle tone region of the palette and get that value now see how that's too red I'm going to cool it down with the ultramarine blue and the cobalt teal. Ultramarine blue, cobalt teal. No big deal. And now we just moved that eyebrow. And really the eyebrow is going to help me uh, identify the structure. And I think um, this is an important learning experience for, for both of us, for you and for me, because it's not all it's not game over if we're not happy with our paintings you know we just want to boom just punch right through the canvas and trust me i've broken some canvases out of anger in the past um, i am a human being i have emotions and i'm sharing everything with you so yes yeah, some canvases i have destroyed in the past just out of pure um, sadness for the result of the painting uh, you wouldn't expect that because I seem so calm demeanored. <laughs> but, you know, I'm trying to share everything with you. You know, even Monet uh, was known for, you know, throwing some of his paintings in the lake or in the water or whatever because he wasn't happy with them. Someone as great as Monet has had those experiences. So what I'm doing is I'm restructuring the... Uh, zygomatic bone and I'm going to take a look at the uh, angle of the valley. You see I'm kind of mixing myself up now so that means uh, we're probably going to uh, skip to a later version of this painting soon um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more distance here. See how I'm kind of moving that over and you know someone who we all I'm pretty sure we all know uh, by now John Singer Sargent was known for repainting faces a la prima wet on wet like this um, and eliminating basically all the details and restructuring the face and for the longest time I couldn't figure out why someone would do that why not just move the eye why go through all this trouble and the thing is if you don't understand the underlying structure behind the shapes um, you know, even though I explained the structures to you, I explained them in a very, you know, a one-on-one basic kind of way. Uh, but I missed, when I was painting, I missed out a lot of important things, uh, such as this right here, this relation between this, like, it's almost like a little spiral here, and I'm starting to ramble a lot. So I'm probably going to paint for a while and then come back and show you the result. And then later... I keep saying this. Later we're going to go to my portrait painting class. It's going to be interesting filming there. I'm definitely not going to film, uh, you know, I'm not going to put anyone on camera that doesn't want to be on camera. So there was much more red on the nose there and that's probably, um, probably too much. I'm just changing that up a little bit. So again, I'm going to do that with pretty much all of the shapes. And I think that even though I'm adding more uh, structure here, I feel like I can still, I don't know, I think from here to here still seems a little bit compressed. So let's add more of a shape. 
And believe me, this is a very liberating way to work. So titanium white and basically uh, yellow ochre. Gonna just add more paint onto the forehead because why not? And already I'm starting to feel much better about this. It's kind of funny, um, you know, a realistic painting can be created in a kind of impressionistic kind of way. It's really a peculiar place to be in. And remember, education, relaxation, and positivity. And I'm also, uh, I've also read that I kind of help, uh, you know, some of you go to bed. <laughs> so if you're listening to my voice going to bed, thank you. I mean, thank you for watching. I really want to have a positive impact on the world through painting. That's what I want. There's much more light over here. And then red, just like in the middle tone region. So we're going to use pearling red. Oof, that's way bright, but I kind of like it. And, um, you know, for those of you that are watching and you're beginners, like you're just learning how to paint, do this. Trust me, it, there's kind of this feeling that we have as painters where we get so invested in our work, so invested in all the brushstrokes that we put down that we just miss sight of these large shapes. And uh, another thing I would say, paint from life as much as possible. You're seeing now basically the differences between observing color from life versus observing color from nature. And I'm, in a way I'm kind of doing my own, a master copy of one of my own paintings. It's kind of a peculiar place to be. More light. More light onto here. All right, so I'm gonna continue to do this, but now we're gonna fast forward to uh, a later stage in this painting. And before engaging into absolute concentration mode where I'm painting off camera, it's important for me to have some music that I like on my phone. So I got, I got my headphones on and we're gonna put some, uh, you know, some, some 90s hip hop, some old school music. And that's just what I enjoy to listen to. I know it's kind of strange uh, for me to talk about music and painting or is that okay? I just like to talk about what I like to listen to when I'm painting. So I think I already asked this question before. You know, let's ask it again. What kind of paint, painting, what kind of music do you like to listen to? I almost said, what kind of painting do you like to listen to? What kind of music do you like to listen to while painting? Uh, so old school hip hop, sometimes I'll put in some relaxing, like calm instrumental music that also helps me too. Um, but anyway, um, let's go ahead and add more specificity to these structures now. structures just like you know we did uh, before except now we have much more we have much more clarity I think um, you know using the uh, the painting that I did from life you know the combination of life and pictures so now I think that this structure is solid enough to start to add the features so remember uh, John Singer Sargent um, I think it was Sergeant said the features on the face are like spots on an apple. So let's see what uh, that means. So essentially we have all of the structure indicated without any details. And from a distance, even where you're seeing at this point, it's extremely uh, volumetric. You can see how the light, the planes here have much more specificity now. The relation between this light, this light, 
all of these edges. And I think we're in a pretty good place to go. Let's ask Pepper. Hey, Pepper. Are we, we ready to get into some smaller shapes now? Yeah? Okay. So now we're ready for the smaller shapes. And don't mind me, I'm just going to be inserting, um, you know, things of my life. I really want this to also be, you know, I, I want to inspire positivity. I want to, so basically, positivity, education, and relaxation. That's what this is about. And of course, we got to have our bearded dragon in this, right? So we're going to have a very simple little dark shape here. Then we're going to have, say, I don't know, let's just get crazy. Let's get right into this color here. Okay, so this is going to be sclera light. So this is sclera light, and then we have sclera dark. A little cooler, sclera light, sclera dark. For those of you that don't, don't know what I'm talking about, the light on the eye. So let's get a color for the iris. So a little bit of sap green, burnt umber, cobalt teal. There's the iris, the shape for the iris, that is. Okay, so now what we want is the colors for the sclera, the iris, then the dark of the eye. You know, the darks we're going to just group together, and their flesh tones are going to be relatively warm, so this is just very much like what we did before. I'm going to try to one brush it for a little while because, um, yeah, this is a really good brush, a really good size brush for what we want to do. And now we're going to start to put in all of the little shapes for the eyes. And remember, it doesn't take that much to get the eyes to read from a distance. So what John Singer Sargent meant by saying that the, uh, the features are like spots on an apple is that you can, you can get a lot done without putting any kind of information in for the eyes. And it's, it's astounding how, how that works. So again, I'm going to paint a little bit, uh, show you and guide you through my thought process. But just like earlier, I don't think I'm going to film every single thing uh, just for the sake of the painting. I'm really going to try to get you the best um, image that I possibly can. And uh, remember, we're using the painting itself that I created uh, using a combination of working from life and, um, and photo reference so that I can uh, get a better idea of what I'm trying to portray in this painting. So anyway, so that's going to be the tear duct. That's the light of the eye. And again, I think I had everything a little too, um, you know, a little too generic before. So now we're going to start to draw in all of these tiny little structures. And we want to make sure that it fits within the larger structures that we placed. It's a very liberating way to work, to be honest. You don't have to worry about too much, uh, you know, you don't have to stress out about measuring or anything as long as you understand the line, or sorry, as long as you understand your verticals, your horizontals. So right now I'm using horizontal. Try to make sure that that angle, so this is the angle. Try to make sure that angle is all right. So now, a little bit of the concavity of the eye socket. Now let's let's see here. So that needs to get darker. And now let's get into that that color for the iris. And you'll see how quickly we can get the um, the eyes to read at least at a distance. So perhaps it's a little too green. So I'm going to make it darker. Some ivory black and alizarin. Let's do the same thing with the other eye. Very simple there. Now let's get some dark. It's dark all in here. Let 
And of course, I'm forgetting there's a little bit of light. There's a little bit of light for sclera light over here. Forgive my hand wobble there. I did have coffee this morning. There we go. And this is really a very liberating way of painting. We're building the painting from the inside out. That just goes to show you, there's no one way that it has to be. So I think I'm gonna actually move. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing that I could actually move up a little bit here. Okay, that's too red, so let's put in some of the green. Sap green, that is. All right, some flesh tone. Just taking basically whatever flesh tone off my color value web. Gonna push this dark a little more. It's important to always, you know, I tend to repeat myself. It's important to always stand back and simplify. Simplify as much as possible. You know, every day, I want to optimize every single day. Every single day that we're alive and able to paint and healthy. Even if we're not in the best health, as long as we can paint, it's a good day. And what has it been, like five minutes? Now we have one eye pretty much almost completely developed. Now we're gonna put in some of these darks. And you know, the trick is, it's kind of like limbo. Um, how, how little information can you put in and still get the form to read? But if you put too much, it's like, you know, like the limbo. You hit the thing, the, the, the rod or whatever, for those of you that know, don't know um, what Limbo is, I'm pretty sure we all know Limbo. <laughs> it's that game where you have to like walk and then lean back and yeah, I'm not going to get into that. I'm sure you know. Let's put this dark under here. And um, this actually goes back further. Throw in some highlights. A little wild, isn't it? Six minutes and we already have the eyes. I'm just looking at my little viewfinder at how long each clip is. Just so I don't let each clip be too long. So if it happens, it happens. All right, so while you're here, let's do the same thing with the nose, just to show you, uh, we're already running seven minutes here, but seven minutes we have those eyes. So now with the nose, super simple to put in these shapes. It's a little bit of ivory black and uh, a lizard permanent. And we're letting the paint, we're utilizing the wet on wet technique and I'll show you how. So I'm just gonna let the brush just kind of softly blend. Just blending a little bit. Ivory black. A lizard and permanent again. There we go. Very, very softly. There. Now we have the nostril. And we're going to let the uh, paint do a lot of the work for us. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of blend all the way into the back of the wing of the nose. Just so we have a little bit more clarity. And um, I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do... I'm going to put in a highlight with cobalt teal and titanium white. Cobalt teal, titanium white. So the idea here is to be able to push color so that we're not just, you know, copying. We're not just putting exactly, you know, we don't need to copy nature. We want to put a little bit of creativity. Always leave room for creativity. So see that, that highlight, cobalt teal 
and titanium white. And that's gonna bother me. I have to fix that. Let the paint do its thing. Just blend in and out once in a while. See that? How we're getting that edge. We're good to go. All right, so for the mouth, you know the drill. So we're gonna go drop our center line here and our imaginary center line. Start off with the top middle portion of the mouth. You know, I think I had the mouth, um, the angle of the mouth was off. I mean, a lot of this stuff was off um, earlier um, in that in the painting we were working on before, which is, again, the same one. Um, anyway, enough rambling. So, Mark, we're making a mark here. I feel like I'm talking to my friend Mark. Cool story. All right, so we're going to put in a shape here. Over here. What a story, Mark. So from here to here. All right, let's see. Who gets the reference? You get my reference. Comment down below. All right, so let's take a look at these shapes. Remember, a line is a pathway between two points. Point one, point two. And it's important to have an idea where the center line is. So again, following the nose, center line is about there. And see how we're drawing with the paint. It's a very liberating way to work. And again, we're not going to spend too much time with the mouth, but we are going to let the paint do a lot of work for us. So let's go ahead and put in the uh, darker shape underneath. Just letting the paint do its thing. So cadmium orange, cadmium red, cadmium orange, cadmium red. We want something bright and light. There we go. We're going to push the color a little bit because why not? See how simple that is. And it's fitting within the larger structures. But it will look painted on uh, if we don't look at the, uh, you know, the values. See how this value is turning because it's getting darker. Remember, it's like limbo. How much information can you put in until you put in too much? And make sure to optimize every single brush stroke in that way. Just like in life, we want to optimize everything. That is, we want to get the best out of everything we have, even if we don't have a lot. I may not be using the best brushes, but I'm doing the best that I can, and I think I'm getting decent results, even though I don't have the highest quality brushes. Then we're going to throw in a little bit of titanium white into our cadmium orange. Maybe a little bit of perlene red. And we're going to put that here. There we go. And then of course, I think that we want to put in a little bit of a greenish tint along the side here. Remember there was there's always going to be a little bit of a half tone because the face is going to turn into the mouth and then go all the way in here and all the way out there. So we can't forget our half tones. Half tones are our friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably sound too much like Bob Ross, but I love Bob Ross. Bob Ross's videos are very inspirational. So a little bit darker in there. Just so we can get that illusion of that form turning into this one. And so now we're just going to get a clean and dry synthetic brush. I think this one should do. And so now what we want to do is just soften some shapes. So um, I'm going to just soften based on... I don't know, just based on feel, to be honest. Uh, what you want to do is you want to sharpen areas that you want to bring emphasis to. Soften others that you want to uh, not put as much emphasis. But then there's also things such as the hairline. So if you don't soften the hairline, 
as much. So if the hairline was as sharp as this, then it would look kind of like the, um, I don't know, like the model's wearing a wig or something, which is okay if she's wearing a wig or if you're wearing a wig, that's perfectly fine. It's just that uh, that edge usually needs to be soft. See how it's sharper here and then super soft over here. I actually made it even softer than the, uh, the, the painting that I was using for reference, but I think I just want to soften all into here. And I'm softening just by blending. I'm basically picking up paint from one side and then just kind of mixing it into the paint on the other side. And um, there's much more subtlety, I think, in these transitions here than I have in the um, in the other painting. So again, I'm, just, I'm trying to make a better painting uh, every single day. So every single day is really about pushing the limits. And again, I want this, I want these videos to be all about uh, positivity, education, and relaxation. So we're taking our time and relaxing. So like I said, um, today is Monday for me. So um, I have like an hour or so till, or even less than that till I have to go teach my portrait class. So I teach a Monday night portrait class in Howard County Arts Council. So I am going to bring you along with me now. I'm not going to film my students or anything like that, but really this is about uh, inviting you into my life. Now we're going to just clean up the palette here and then get ready to go teach my portrait class. And what you want to do with a wooden palette, just like I showed in yesterday's video, is just scrape the excess paint. So I'm going to take off the medium, the excess paint, and the, um, and the whites because I do take off the whites and then store them somewhere else. So let's just go ahead and clean this off. So the white paint is now in a separate, on a separate piece of glass and it is in my freezer. We'll just clean off this little area here. I'm not sure if I'm going to take this palette though to the um, to the portrait class, just because I don't have my students using all of these colors. Because as you know, you don't need absolutely need all these colors uh, to paint a portrait, especially you know for all of my beginners out there. And I have plenty of videos on limited palettes and uh, Zorn palette and all that stuff. But there's quite a lot of stuff that you can get with a uh, extended palette. All right, so in the freezer you go, right on top of my peach ice cream. And now I just gotta clean off the brushes. And, uh, you know, I think I'm gonna take Lumpy. A big old palette. Might as well. I don't really think that I'm going to, um, I don't think that I'm gonna need to bring all of those colors. Uh, like I mentioned from my class, and I am going to bring my uh, my structure board, the uh, the dry erase board, just to do some more structure demonstrations for them. And this is the ongoing demonstration that's going on in my portrait painting class, uh, fundamentals of portrait painting. So you can see, uh, so I'm kind of painting 20 minutes each week, really, just in the beginning of each class, just to show them what to look for. Like last time we were looking at the structure of the eyes and the uh, glabella and all that stuff. And again, there's a lot of stuff that you can get from observing in painting videos. You can, you can pause me, you can scroll and all of that. But that really is one way of learning that uh, is different from learning from the, uh, you know, from having me there in person. So when I'm there, I'll, I'll try and film me setting up and uh, try to bring you as much into the experience as possible. Uh, but just know that, you know, you get, I think you get much more out of it when you have the instructor there to assist you. And again, that doesn't mean I'm not going to have online resources because I think it's important to be able to, uh, you know, provide that kind of teaching to people that perhaps don't have the, the means to seek out, uh, you know, trained artists such as myself to, you know, guide them throughout the entire process. So here, you can kind of see it. This is like week one, um, or yeah, week one was just basically like a burnt umber drawing, and then week two we got into some of the, um, 
you know, the grisaille, so the uh, titanium white burnt umber. And then uh, week three, we got into some of these colors, uh, just simple colors. And then week four, I think we're actually on week four. Oh no, we're on week five, I think. I should probably keep track of that. So the next, the, the next color session, you can see like the eye started to get developed. And really, this is just an ongoing demonstration just to show my students what to look for. Let's go teach a class. So I just finished up with my portrait painting class. I'm really excited with how everyone is doing. Uh, it's interesting because they're reaching a point now, uh, this is like the fifth uh, day, or this concludes the fifth day, yeah. Uh, so they reach a point where, you know, they see, they reach the limit of what they can see, not just how, you know, how well you see, but what their mind can comprehend in terms of shape. Now here's the demo, you can't really see it too well, but uh, from a distance, you can really get the the effect of light, and that's actually something that I've been uh, pushing with my students: the structure and the effect of light. So I think, like I said before, it's really important to have someone there guiding you because um, we do have a model, as you saw, sitting there from life, and I'm guiding them through every step of the way. Now, like I said, it's it's good to be able to watch the videos and follow along with the videos. I know that it's very helpful, or it can be very helpful. But you know, just taking the chance to have someone there guiding you along the way is a really, really good thing. And you know what, that that very much concludes today's video. I've got a lot of computer work to do when I get home. Uh, that being said, I really hope that these videos help you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. Remember, I'm trying to bring education, positivity, and relaxation to you every single day. I'll be back again bright and early in another 24 hours or something like that. I'll see you tomorrow.